Piece of cake, right? Yep, I think so. Let's do it. All right, so this is what we're making. Six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as usual, I'm not gonna measure anything because I'm using the bump jig method. Here are the pattern pieces. Once your pattern's done, all you gotta do is use these, no measuring. So let me show you. So instead of measuring, just use these Mascon and ZB tools here. These two are the same as these two, just small and big. But these two bump jigs, no measuring needed at all. Just some straight edges and bump jigs. Now just lay out the patterns. This is the easy part. White mud, took an ollie. This is just a glass slicker from Barry King. Now just let it dry. All right, it's dry. Just take a little rag, t-shirt, whatever, buff it. Let's put our pattern pieces back on. Let's get this thing cut out. Now to make that square, that's where the bump jigs come in. See, somewhere in that area, no measuring needed. We'll do the curves in a minute. Hold on. I'd like to start a straight line here so I could do straight, straight, all the way across. So just take a bump jig and make a straight Make sure your patterns fit on here, however. That should work, like so, right? Perfect. Now you see this ruler is not long enough to go across. I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Just hold the ruler there, take your bump jig, set it there, just slide it right through. Look at that. These are made so they won't scratch the leather. Perfectly straight and perfectly straight. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to make these two with no measuring in the bump jigs. These are the exact same height. And these two pieces are the exactly the same, so I could use this one or either one twice. There you go. All four of those are identical and it took 20 seconds. All right, let's knock these two out right here. That's these two pockets. Just take that bump jig, put it in the corner, put that in the corner. Now we can trace that and cut it out. That's actually a straight line. Oh, need to get this little tip here off too, don't I? All right, easy, easy. Much better. Oh crap, a little, little tiny corner right here. Just clip these off, hold on. Mask on and ZB anvil, a little arc punch. Easy. <laughs> All right, let's put some stamps on here. These are all numbered. This one is number one. I think I'm up to five. So let's get that done real quick. 
There's a five right there. Yeah, it's backwards on purpose. Mask on ZB Anvil in the Arbor Press stamp set up and we could use our bump jigs again to line that up. Okay. I'm just gonna eyeball this one because I got rivets. Yep. Okay, let's uh, let's finish these up, put these curves and these. So on the pattern, I've got a little tiny punch in that right there, and then I got two little hole punches here and here, and I'm gonna cut out that red line to make that. Bump jig. Now just connect the dots. And cut it out. And then round off these corners. That's not too bad. Like that. Now just clip these outside corners here, 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 here. Just like we did there. Next up, let's get these edges all pretty, beveled, dyed, and burnished. Then we can start putting this thing together. Very King Bevelers. You get the idea. Now we just dye these edges. This is just a watercolor pen filled with leather dye. Now do that to the rest. What are you doing? All right. Let's make these edges pretty with some white mud. And canvas. See the before and the after, dull, pretty. Now do the rest. And through the magic of television and me not needing to waste your time, that's what they look like. Let's make this pocket right here. This one, this one, where these pockets attach. First, we already have that straight edge from before. Let me just put a 90 on here if I don't already have one. Oh, I don't. Well, here we go. So we know this pocket and this pocket or piece are the same. So use these as your spacers for your bump jig. We'll get to this in a little bit. Ignore all this because I've trimmed off an eighth off of each end because I don't need that much space in the middle. So I just adjusted it. Ignore all these rivets. Okay. This is this pocket. Let's glue these on and get this top edge finished up. You need to mark where you want to rough up this lather for the glue. And grab a mask on and ZB rougher and rough it up. The back of these two. Now add the glue. This is barge cement. Let it dry to tacky and put it together. Chloe. Here we go. Now 
Not 100% necessary, but I like to sand all in one direction between each layer. It's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and clip the top two corners here. Bevel, die, burnish this top edge. I'm not gonna make you sit through that, so we'll be right back. Okay, so that's done. These rivets right here go through into here. So I'm gonna get these four and these four in here. And we could use the bump jig to mark them. You get the idea, right? Roll on. Like that. Next up, let's put these pockets on here. Same drill as before. Use the bump jig, mark for rivets. Use the rougher, bump jig, scuff, glue, stick, and we'll meet you right back here. Really? On the table? Really? All right, we know we got square here. We're gonna do the backside pocket. Now, to figure out the length of this pocket, because it's gonna be a little bit different. See how that squishes up in there? Just fold it over and wrap it around and mark it. See that? Mark that. Take your bump jig and square. Now we just attach that rear pocket to that. When I do these riveted wallets, I like to just do one side glued and then rivet it together because of that pucker right there in the middle. It makes it a little bit easier, at least on one side. Good and dry, tacky. Now let's do some rivets. Like this, and like this. Now, I've already showed you how to do rivets, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. Hold on one second. Little bonus tip for you. If your rivet setter is a little bit too big and it might hit some leather right beside your rivet when you're setting that burr on there, I'm using 14s, these. Just grab a bunch of 12 burrs. See the holes are bigger? Grab your 14, put on there, get it started. Then just grab a bunch of 12s, just as a spacer so you don't hit that leather. There you go. All that's safe. Now proceed. 
Done with this side. Now just glue this side. Do the same thing, holes and rivets. Hold on. This is what we got, front, back. Now just clip your corners. And sand. And believe it or not, we are one acronym away from being finished. BDB, right? Bevel, die, burnish. Let's do it. taking a break huh yeah huh there you go